friends welcome you all to this video lecture on wireless communication this lecture is designed to help undergraduate students of ECE stream to solve numerical problems based on FDMA and TDMA let's begin with FDMA frequency division multiple axis it's a multiple axis technique wherein the available bandwidth is divided into number of narrow banded channels and allotted to each user so what will be the number of channels available in an FDMA system it's given by n is equal to bt minus 2b got by bc where bt is the total bandwidth and b got is the got bandwidth and bc is the channel bandwidth so now let's solve a problem based on this in a us amps 416 channels are allocated to various cellular operators. The channel between them is 30 kHz with a God band of 10 kHz. Calculate the spectrum allocation given to each operator. So when you read this question, what we have to infer here is, since the system is an AMPS system, the multiple access technique will be FDMA. Even though it is not mentioned in the question, we have to infer it from the given details in the question. Since it is an analog mobile phone system, the access technique is FDMA. Let's write down the given values. N is 416. The channel bandwidth is given as 30 kilohertz and the God band is given as 10 kilohertz. And we are asked to find out BT, that is the total spectrum alerted to the operator. To find this, we have to use the formula N is equal to BT minus 2B God by BC. So from the formula we have to derive what is bt so this formula we have to rewrite to get our bt so bt is equal to n into bc plus 2 br so we have to substitute the values from the question and find out the answer so for this before we proceed with all we have to remember is all the values whatever we substitute should be in the same si units whenever we are dealing with frequency the value should be in hertz and whenever we are dealing with time, it should be in seconds. Now, let's substitute. So, N is 416. The channel bandwidth is given as 30 kilohertz. So, 30 kilohertz. So, 30 into 10 power 3 hertz. So, the conversion is done here. Plus 2 into the God band is given as 10 kilohertz. So, 10 into 10 power 3. So, when you substitute, multiply and add them, you get the answer as 12,500 into 10 power 3 hertz which can also be equivalently written as 12.5 megahertz. So now let's move on to the t problems based on TDMA. So TDMA is time division multiple axis. It is a digital technique which enables all the user to make use of the entire available spectrum but in different time slots. So here more number of users can be accommodated and the information is transmitted in the form of frames. So thus the number of channels available in a TDMA system is given by N is equal to M into BT minus 2 B God by BC. We have already come across that BT is total bandwidth, B God is God bandwidth and BC is channel bandwidth. And the new term what we have come across here is M and M is nothing but the number of time slots per frame. Another important formula what we will be using in TDMA is frame efficiency. So frame efficiency eta is efficiency and eta f is nothing but frame efficiency is given by 1 minus BOH by BT into 100 percentage where BOH refers to the number of overhead bits per frame and BT refers to the total number of bits per frame. And before we proceed with let us discuss about TDMA frame structure so that we can do the problems little easily. So one TDMA frame will consist of preamble, information message and trail bits. The information message is the uh, user message. So this will be divided into number of slots. One TDMA frame will consist of M time slots like this which corresponds to M users. And each slot will have a structure like this. It starts with trail bits, sync bits, information data and God bits. So this is the TDMA frame structure. So knowing this, we can proceed with our TDMA based problems. So the first problem what we are going to discuss here is a question taken from university question paper. 
Consider a GSM system, which is a TDMA FDT system that uses 25 MHz for the forward link, which is broken into radio channels of 200 kHz. If eight speed channels are supported on a single radio channel, and if no God band, find the number of simultaneous uses that can be accommodated in GSM. So let's write down the given values as usual. BT is 25 MHz. Channel bandwidth is given as 200 kHz. M is given as 8 and the God band is given as 0. And we are supposed to find the number of channels N. So the formula for your TDMA system is N is equal to M into BT minus 2 B God by BC. So all the values are given in the question. So we have to just substitute here. M is 8. BT is 25 megahertz. So 25 into 10 power 6. God band is 0. BC is 200 kilohertz, so 200 into 10 power 3. So when you make the necessary substitutions and you multiply and divide them, you get the answer as 1000. So that means 1000 channels, that means 1000 users can be accommodated in the given TDMA system. So problem number 3, this is also a university question. So if GSM uses a frame structure where each frame consists of 8 time slots, and each time slot contains 156.25 bits and the data is transmitted at 270.833 kbps in the channel. Find time duration of a bit, time duration of a slot, time duration of a frame. How long must a user occupying a single time slot wait between two successive transmissions? So let's see, let's write down the given values. M is given as 8 slots per frame. And the number of bits per slot is given as 156.25 bits and the data rate is given as 270.833 kbps. And we are supposed to find out four values. A is time duration of a bit, B is time duration of a slot, C time duration of a frame and D is the waiting time between two successive transmissions. So to begin with, in order to find the time duration of a bit, TB is equal to 1 by data rate. It's a direct substitution. Data rate is directly given in the problem as 270.833 kbps. So 1 by data rate. So 1 by 270.833. And remember it is kbps. So kilo. So we have to convert. We have to convert this. So you have to multiply into 10 power 3. So when you divide, you get the answer as 3.692 microseconds. So the next one, we are supposed to find out the time duration of a slot, T slot. So in uh, one slot, we have to see how many bits we have. That is the number of bits per slot into time duration of a bit will give us a time duration of a slot. It's very simple. So the number of bits in a slot is given as 156.25 and the time duration of one bit is we have found it out as 3.692 microsecond. So we have to multiply to get the answer as 0.577 milliseconds. Next, we have to find out the time duration of a frame. So you have to see how many slots per frame and we have to multiply with the time duration of each slot. So in one frame, we have eight time slots and the time duration of a single frame is 0 0.577 millisecond. So when you multiply this, you get the answer as 4.615 milliseconds. Now, the last question is how long a user has to wait between two successive transmissions? So waiting time between two successive transmission will be nothing but the time duration of a frame. Every user has to wait for his next turn for 4.615 milliseconds. So problem number four, a normal GSM has three start bits, three stop bits, 26 training bits for allowing adaptive equalization. 8.25 God bits and two bursts of 58 bit of encrypted data, which is transmitted at 270.833 kbps in the channel. Find A, the number of overhead bits per frame, B, total number of bits per frame, C, frame rate, and D, time duration of a slot, and E, frame efficiency. So let's see how to do this problem. So here, uh, they have mentioned the system as GSM. So GSM is a 2G technology. That means it uses TDMA. So now, what are the given values? Uh, the given values are, they have mentioned it as 3 start bits, 3 stop bits, 26 training bits, 8.25 God bits and the information is 2 bursts of 58 bits of data. And the data rate is also given as 
3 kbps and we are supposed to find the overhead bits per frame b the total number of bits per frame c the frame rate d time duration of a slot and e frame efficiency so now before we proceed with the problem once again let us understand the structure of a slot tdma time slot so in one slot time slot we will have trail bits followed by sync bits followed by information data and god bits so of all these your information data is the number of bits which is carrying the information and all the remaining bits which are shown in green here will correspond to the overhead bits please understand here information data is carrying the information whereas the remaining bits are used for synchronizing and for trailing and for god and other additional purposes so all these are additional bits which are required for synchronizing and other purposes are called as overhead bits okay so from the question the trail bits are nothing but the start bits and the stop bits so we have 3 plus 3 trail bits and we have 26 training bits these training bits are used for synchronization so they correspond to the synchronizing bits and 8.25 chord bits are there okay and if you see the actual information is two bursts of 58 bits data so 2 into 58 which is nothing but 116 bits so this is how the single time slot will be now let us understand uh, how to calculate the number of overhead bits per slot so all that is shown in green are the overhead bits so 3 plus 3 plus 26 synchronizing bits and 8.25 god bits so in one slot we will have 40.25 bits of overhead bits and if you see the total number of bits in the slot will be this 40.25 plus 116 bits of data which is nothing but 156.25 bits now let us find out the first one number of overhead bits per frame so we have already found out what will be the number of overhead bits per slot now how to find the number of overhead bits per frame so in this question they have not mentioned anything regarding the number of slots in a frame when it is not mentioned by default the m value that is the number of slots in a frame should be taken as 8 so in one frame we will have 8 time slots this is a default value therefore the number of overhead bits per frame will be 8 into number of overhead bits per slot which is 40.25 bits so the total number of overhead bits in a frame will be equal to 322 bits so next we will find the total number of bits per frame so in one frame we have 8 time slots so what will be the total number of bits in a frame 8 into total number of bits in a slot so the total number of bits in a slot we have found it out as 156.25 so by multiplying you get the answer as 1250 bits and the third value to find the frame rate frame rate is the data rate divided by the number of bits per frame so the data rate is given in the question as 270.833 kbps divided by 1250 so remember 270.833 into 10 power 3 divided by 1250 you will get the answer as 216.66 frames per second. Next, to define the time duration of a slot. So, time duration of a slot is number of bits per slot into TB. So, TB we have to find out. Already we have discussed to find the TB. It is 1 by data rate. So, 1 by 270.833 kbps which is 3.692 microseconds. Now, to find the time duration of a slot, number of bits per slot should be multiplied with a bit duration. So, the number of bits per slot we have found out already as 156.25 into the bit duration is 3.692 microseconds, which gives us 0 0.577 milliseconds. Finally, to find the frame efficiency, frame efficiency eta f is 1 minus boh divided by bt into 100 to convert that into a percentage next uh, let us substitute eta f is equal to 1 minus we have 322 overhead bits divided by 1250 the total number of bits into 100 gives us 74.24 percentage